What do you mean you can't come? I'm on a company trip. I'm going to have a good time, so don't get in my way. I can't believe it. He said that even though his wife's father passed away. Hey, why didn't you tell me that my mom died? I calmly told him. It's your fault for not answering the phone. If you're going to resent me, resent your own stupidity. My name is Sophia. I'm a 32-year-old housewife. My husband Charles and I have been married for six years. We met because of our jobs and got married two years after we started dating. I worked after we got married, but quit after a year when our son Sean was born and became a stay-at-home mom. After the birth of our son, I basically devoted myself to raising him. But when he turned two years old, I started working part-time to save money for future tuition and other expenses. My husband is very busy with work and rarely helps me with housework, but my mother-in-law often supports me instead. When our son was born, we started living near my parents-in-law's house, which made it easier for my mother-in-law to come. Thank you for helping me all the time, Valerie. It's fine. I'm bored anyways. My mother-in-law used to take care of my son while I was working part-time. She was really helpful when the daycare was closed and I couldn't take him there. My mother-in-law was always kind and treated me like a real daughter. My father-in-law was also a wonderful man and I loved him very much. So living near my in-laws was not a problem for me. In fact, it made me very happy. Sophia, your food is always so good. You're a better cook than I am, aren't you? No, no, not even close. But what is Charles doing while you're here cooking delicious meals for him? Well, he's always working late. But then again, Sean is still a little boy and at the age when he wants to play with his father, isn't he? My husband always worked overtime and often came home late at night. I used to make dinner for him, but one day he said to me, I feel bad if I don't eat your food, so I do. But if I eat too late at night, I don't feel well the next day, so you can stop cooking for me. He said he would only call me if he came home early and needed dinner, so I basically started preparing food for my son and myself. But my son is still small, so I always end up with too much food. My mother-in-law, perhaps out of concern for me, sometimes has dinner with us. If I eat with my husband all the time, I get bored. It's a lot of fun to eat with you and Sean. Isn't your husband jealous of you? Yes, he is. That's why I make up excuses sometimes. My mother-in-law laughs as she tells me this. Thanks to my mother-in-law, I don't miss my husband when he comes home late or when we don't get to eat together as often as I'd like. I lost my mother before I married my husband, so my mother-in-law was like a mother figure to me. I don't want to say this directly to my mother-in-law, but I had a good relationship with my parents-in-law like that. But circumstances can change out of the blue. One day, my father-in-law became ill and needed nursing care. My mother-in-law seemed to be very upset about this, and she had to stay with my father-in-law for a while. I often went with my son to check on my parents-in-law, and it seemed that my mother-in-law was having a hard time taking care of her husband. Valerie, aren't you tired? I'm okay. I'm sorry I haven't been able to take care of Sean. You must be busy taking care of him and working, right? You don't need to worry about that. You should think about getting some rest. And if you need me to help you with anything, please, don't hesitate to tell me. Thank you. I'm feeling better just by having you by my side. My mother-in-law tried not to show me how tired she was, but I could tell from being around her that she was still having a pretty tough time. So I asked my husband to go check on her. Your mother seems to act tough around me, and I think she's pushing herself too hard. So why don't you go see her sometimes by yourself? If it's just her own son, I'm sure she'll be able to relax. But when I told my husband this, he responded in a surprising way. I don't think I need to go. It's too much of a hassle and there's nothing I can do. I can't do the housework, I can't take care of him, and I'd just be in the way, wouldn't I? Did you hear what I said? I'm just saying that it would be easier on your mother if you, her son, was around her. No, I don't think it would change anything. I'm tired from working late every night, so at least let me rest on my days off. My husband said that and didn't go to his parents' house after all. He spent the whole time lounging on the couch at home, and when I thought he was getting ready to go out, he said he was going out with his friends. I became more and more disillusioned with my husband. I thought he was always working and didn't care much about me or our son, but when I saw him putting himself first and not showing any interest even when his own parents were going through a hard time, I thought he was a terrible person. Then, my husband found out he was going to be sent out of the city for work. 
It's in a rural area, but it's an urban area, so it sounds like a lot of fun. It's cheaper than LA, and I'm really looking forward to it. I see. I was looking at my husband with a subdued eye as I rejoiced. I guess he doesn't like being nagged by me about seeing his parents and playing with his son, so he's happy to be free from those days. But to be honest, I was glad he was leaving, too. I think I had come to dislike him completely. No, I don't know if it was to the point of dislike, but I thought it would be better to keep my distance from him. From then on, I lived with my son alone. I was quite happy not to have to think about my husband's dinner when he came home early sometimes, and also not to have to wash his shirts and socks and so on. Just not having that makes the housework a lot easier. So the extra time I could afford to spend there, I decided to go to my parent-in-law's house to support my mother-in-law. If I was taking care of my father-in-law, I wouldn't have much energy or time left over to do housework, so I decided to help out with the housework. Valerie, dinner is ready. Thank you. You've been a big help. Well, you've always been a great help to me. Sean and I haven't had dinner yet, so come join us. Oh, that's so nice. It's going to be lovely. My mother-in-law seemed to find it comforting that she could eat with us. She was eating with a very relaxed expression on her face. My son loves his grandparents, so he was happy to be with them. I continued to go to my parent-in-law's house to help out in various ways. But then, a very unfortunate thing happened to me. My father! To my surprise, I received the news that my father had suffered a heart attack and passed away. I was at my parent-in-law's house at the time and went to the hospital immediately after explaining the situation to my mother-in-law. Dad! There was my father, covered with a white cloth. He was fine when I saw him just the other day. We had just had a nice conversation and I had promised him that I would come back to see him again. I could not accept his sudden death. But I couldn't stand around grieving. I had to prepare for the funeral. I tried my best to put my mind at ease and rushed to make the funeral arrangements, thinking that I had a long way to go before I could cry. And then I called my husband. Charles, my father passed away. The wake and funeral will start tomorrow, so could you please come home right away? I thought my husband would say he would come home right away, but he replied in a way I never expected. I can't have that kind of thing coming out of the blue. I can't go, so I'll pass. I couldn't believe my ears. Wait, what do you mean you can't come? I'm on a company trip. Company trip? Yeah, that's right. I'm going to have a lot of fun, so don't get in my way. I can't believe it. He said that, even though his wife's father had passed away. At that moment, I heard something snap inside me. You're putting travel above family, aren't you? You've been acting like you don't care about anyone but yourself all this time. Huh? What are you talking about? I'm the one supporting you in Sean's life. If I didn't care about you, I wouldn't be paying your bills. It's your duty as a father to provide for Sean. Never mind. I don't want you at the funeral. Why don't you just enjoy your company trip? What the hell? You just made me feel bad on the eve of the trip. If you don't want me to go, don't call me. With that, he hung up the phone. I was beyond angry and disgusted. Sophia, I'm sorry. My stupid son. Valerie, did you hear that? I'm sorry. I was taking care of my husband and I had to go to the bathroom. And that's when I heard it. I can't believe he said those horrible things to you. I'm so sorry. Don't worry about it. I'm really grateful for all you've done for me. You've been very busy taking care of your husband and even Sean for me while I've been busy preparing for the funeral. I really wish Charles would come home soon, but I didn't expect much from him. Seeing me looking so unhappy, my mother-in-law seemed to have a thought. My husband and I thought we had raised him well in our own way. But looking at his attitude towards you, I'm not sure if he's been properly disciplined. I know this is not something a husband's parents would normally say, but Sophia, I wish you all the best for the rest of your life. I'm sure nothing you will do will change my stupid son's mind. There may be many obstacles, but if you want a divorce, get one. My husband and I won't say anything about it. Valerie? After my mother-in-law told me this, I decided to rethink about my husband. 
but first, I need to focus on my father's funeral. With my mother-in-law's support, I was able to hold the funeral and see my father off properly. After the funeral, I felt a surge of sadness and cried into my mother-in-law's chest. If it had not been for my mother-in-law, I would have gone insane. I regret my marriage to my husband, but I think that meeting my mother-in-law was a treasure for me. But life is truly cruel. Two days after my father's funeral, my mother-in-law passed away. She was involved in a car accident. My father-in-law and I were both devastated at the news of her death because she was like a real mother to me, and the shock was so strong that I was in a state of despair for a while. Then, as I began to regain my composure, I immediately called my husband. But no matter how many times I tried to call him on his phone, I couldn't get through. Why? Why isn't he answering? I was frustrated. No matter how many times I tried to call him, he wouldn't pick up. I left voicemails, I sent numerous messages, but he never returned my calls, and my messages were never even read. But I didn't have time to wait for an answer that never came. I talked to my father-in-law and immediately proceeded with the funeral arrangements. My father-in-law is in a wheelchair, so it was up to me to make the arrangements. It was so sad that I had to do my mother-in-law's funeral when I had just finished my father's funeral a few days before. I couldn't keep up with my emotions. Still, I had to make sure my mother-in-law was well taken care of. With this in mind, I held my mother-in-law's funeral. Some of my relatives asked me, Why didn't your husband come? So I answered honestly, and everyone was stunned. What the hell is he doing, going on a company trip and not being in touch when his mother dies? I heard he didn't even show up for his wife's father's funeral. Word of my husband spread through the extended family, and he was beginning to be hated by everyone. But I never felt sorry for him. I tried to contact him several times, so it was his fault for not being able to reach me. Then I learned a surprising fact. When one of my relatives heard that my husband was on a company trip, she tilted her head and said, Hey, speaking of the company Charles is with, the company I work for is a business partner of his, though they were all there when I went to work the day before yesterday. Is that really true? Yeah, but did you say Charles was working out of the city? Maybe it's a company trip to that branch office. Well, that was never mentioned, though. That story led me to have other suspicions about my husband. Anyway, we managed to finish my mother-in-law's funeral, and I was sorting through her belongings with my father-in-law. When I was walking to the front door, I found my husband there. When he saw me, he stared at me with a devilish look on his face. Then he turned red in the face and yelled at me. Hey, why didn't you tell me that my mom died? That's what my husband said to me. It's your fault I didn't get to see my mom in her last moments. I will never forgive you. How could my husband say such a thing so selfishly? I calmly told him, It's your fault for not answering the phone. I called you many times. I even left voicemails and I sent messages many times. It's your fault for not checking on them sooner. If you're going to resent me, resent your own stupidity. My husband stared at me, clenching his fist as if he didn't know what to say back to me. Finally, he found some kind of excuse and opened his mouth. I was on a company trip. I couldn't be the only one on my phone. You mean the whole company was there? Yeah, yeah, they were. All the people from the branch office were there. That's funny. I spoke to someone at your company and they told me that the branch office you're in doesn't do company retreats. I wonder who on earth you went on that big trip with. Oh, no, that's... My husband choked up, perhaps panicking over the unexpected question. That response was like an answer already. I don't think I can do this with you. Let's get a divorce. Wait a minute. I'm not thinking divorce. I don't care if you're not thinking about it. I'm going to get proof of your infidelity, and I'm going to get a divorce. My husband was panicking once I brought up divorce. I guess he thought he could have an affair in the comfort of his own home. But I just couldn't let him get away with that so easily. In fact, I had even made a request to a relative. It was a request to investigate an affair at the company where my husband worked. The people at the head office were willing to investigate because if they refused, there would be all sorts of trouble. And at that time, according to the information from the employees, my husband and his lover, who were getting along well with each other, were often seen together. 
It's disgusting that even after your mother passed away, you were seeing your lover. When I told him this, he was extremely upset. I'm sorry. It was just a one-time thing. It didn't mean anything. He said that, but he confessed, so that was the end. So you admit to the affair? Y yeah but I'm sorry, because now I realize that you're the only one for me. My husband approached me saying that. I realize that you're the only one who's not for me. I'm not going to change my mind about the divorce, so get on with it and sign the divorce papers. My husband was astonished at how firm my intentions were, and in no time at all, word spread around that my husband had been having an affair and what had happened at the funeral. So my ex-husband spent his days feeling ashamed of himself and gave into the divorce. My father-in-law has been in a nursing home since then and is now making many friends with his cheerful personality. I'm sure he was sad when my mother-in-law passed away, so I'm glad he was able to make friends like that. After that, my divorce from my husband was finalized and I filed for alimony against my ex-husband and the adulterer. I asked for child support from my ex-husband and he is still unable to quit his job because he owes me a lot of money, even though he is looked at coldly by all his relatives and people at his workplace. The affair was with a junior colleague at the same company, but they stopped seeing each other after this incident. Apparently, my ex-husband was getting played by this woman. Well, it doesn't matter to me anymore. Meanwhile, I started living alone with my son. We are getting along well with each other, getting government benefits for single mothers, etc., and working hard at part-time jobs myself. I was able to gradually increase my part-time work hours and eventually became a full-time employee. Since then, my life with my son has become much more comfortable. Sometimes my son and I visit the nursing home to check on my father-in-law. He seems to really enjoy our visits. My father-in-law has cut ties with my ex-husband, and he doesn't seem to know how he's doing or be interested in him after that. I don't care about that man anymore, either. All I want to do now is enjoy my life with my son. I'm going to continue to live my life and work hard, thinking only of watching my son grow up.